and I show up to the set for the first day, and there's a push-up bra and two chicken cutlets. <gasps> and I was like, ah. Chloe, hi. What's up, Lovely how are you? Meet you. Nice to meet you. Come, come in for on. a hug. How are bring you? Bring it in, bring it in. You smell absolutely amazing. Oh, well, Did thank you. you. Wow. Thank you. First of all, thank you so much for doing this movie. Uh, this is mm -hmm. what I call the perfect hybrid of art and activism coming together. That's so funny you say that. That's literally my exact line. That's, that's literally oh, my line okay, in all my interviews. <laughs> I said this is my chance to meld my art with my activism. So just to set up what this story <coughs> is about, Cameron Post, that's who you play. Yep. She's a 17-year-old girl who was caught kissing one of her female friends, uh -huh. and then she sent off to this Christian-led conversion camp yep. um, to kind of get rid of your same-sex attraction. Welcome to God's Promise. Cameron, your struggle is with the sin of same-sex attraction. Change will come through God, but, but, but within me. me. When you were doing uh, this film, did you ever go to your two gay brothers and say, guys, what did it feel like uh, when you were going through those times of trying to figure out who you are? Did they ever jump in and say, hey, this is what it felt like? When we made this movie, it wasn't until we all watched the movie together at the premiere in Sundance when my brothers came to me and they shared uh, a little more with me, which I had been unaware of, which is the fact that they had uh, consulted with the church prior to coming out with our family. They had consulted with the church and tried for months to pray the gay away. Oh, wow. And I was completely unaware that that was happening in my own family. And what happened with your brothers to make them decide, I'm not going to pray it away, I'm going to be the way I am? Well, they tried their best, and they, they realized that it wasn't having any effect, <laughs> because it's I not a the, choice. I did the same thing. Did you? I used to sit in bed uh, at night, yeah. praying to a God I didn't really believe in, saying, you know, yeah. get, the, get these feelings away, get these feelings yeah. away. And when they didn't go away, I just started to think of breasts <sighs> all the time. Yeah, Nothing. which is, uh, <laughs> you know, there's a moment in the, in the story when she tries to do that, to condition herself to be, you know, sexually attracted to the man, and she, you know, can't achieve that. So it didn't work. I've just never thought of homosexuality like this. There's no such thing as homosexuality. There's only the same struggle with sin we all face. <laughs> Would you let drug addicts throw parades for themselves? Coming from a conservative family, was there at any point with um, your mother or your extended family where they sort of said to your brothers, look, maybe you should try and fix this, or was it an immediate, hey, it's okay? We were really blessed. I mean, my mom was a very, very progressive woman. So she was incredible uh, with the way that she dealt with it. But my father, on the other hand, um, took it as an offense to his parenting uh, in the beginning wow. and found that he had obviously made a mistake in some time period within you know, their childhood. He had, he had messed up as a father. He hadn't put um, enough masculinity inside the boys. Exactly. Okay. So that was something that had to be overcome and just the conversations. I mean, I think it changes everyone's perspective because if you've never questioned your sexual orientation, it's hard to understand what that even feels like. You should consider yourself amongst family, Cameron. You can call me Cam. Cameron's already a masculine name. To abbreviate it to something even less feminine only exacerbates your gender confusion. Right. It must have been pretty hard when, uh, I only heard this this morning, you were shooting mm. for 23 days, pretty yep. quick turnaround. Very quick. And in the middle, uh, that guy that you don't like the name of, we'll just call he him. He who shall not be named. T-Dog. <laughs> don't even give him that <laughs> name. That's worse. That's worse. He doesn't uh, deserve uh, that. Uh, okay, we'll the call Voldemort him. Uh, of America. We'll call him Ginger Nut. Like a Ginger Nut biscuit. <laughs> him and Pence, uh, they got in. But then you had to do one of the happiest scenes. The happiest in scene. In the film, yeah. straight after. Yeah. So how did you uh, put the smile on over tears? Well, you know, I think it was really the opportunity to use all of that oppression and that sadness and that anger that we felt in that moment, I was able to channel it into that scene as my highest form of rebellion, my highest form of activism against the administration, was to give my all in that moment. Because without that high point of elation in the script, in the story, it, you know, the movie would have fallen flat in a lot of ways. So it, it really, if anything, lit a fire under me. What made you want to go and do a movie that isn't full of dollar dollar? What yeah. <laughs> was it about this that, because you took a break away from the screen for a while, yeah. mm -hmm. you had some thinking time and, and then this was the one. <laughs> yeah, I, uh, yeah, I took about a year and a half off, um, which was the first time I'd ever taken a breath after 15 years of making movies. You know, this movie was a chance for me to get back 
to what I started with was championing movies that everyone said don't do. <laughs> you know. Why did people say not to do this one? It was an unknown director. You know, it's a pretty much it's a second movie. Um, she had done one other movie that was about her own life, so that was one thing that they were worried about. They were worried about the fact that we had no distribution at all. You know, the way they see it is a very controversial movie. I didn't see it that way. I mean, I saw it as, you know, controversial maybe, but I saw it as a chance, you know, to to educate people with entertainment and to So you partner. just said, I'm doing it. Yeah. It doesn't matter, I'm doing it. My brother it. and I, against everyone, we were like, I want to do it. So That's so good. We went and did it, and uh, it ended up working out. I think if your top priority is to get better, that should also be true of the people you surround yourself with, you know? And you think you're getting better? Of course. I've been brought closer to God, and I can feel him guiding me. You're playing a minority in this film, um, and, and you know the struggle of what it is to be LGBT. Another struggle um, that would face you in your real day-to-day -day life is being a lady in Hollywood. <laughs> um, and that has been you know, big news over the last year or so. Yeah. Um, is it shifting? Is it changing? Um, and before the kind of, you know, it became a big topic of, of conversation, did you face any <sighs> difficulty? It'd be unrealistic to say that I've never, you know, felt unsafe in, in as a woman. Uh, I have for years, I, you know, became aware of that when I was about 14, that I had to be very aware of my oh. safety within meetings with uh, adult men. Uh, because my brother and my mother sat me down and talked to me. I'm very blessed to have been incredibly insulated by working with my mother and brother and having them around 99% of the time. But, you know, that still doesn't go without saying that I had multiple conversations that were incredibly, you know, inappropriate, inappropriate for a 15-year-old to be talking about Are we talking or be about prefaced with. Are, are we talking about them sort of shooting you down because you're just a girl? Or asking That's one you to do thing, things that they don't or, want Or, yeah, yeah, sexualizing me in certain ways where I would be like, I don't think I should be doing that. And just, you know, asking me to do things in, in, in scenes and in movies that was not okay. I mean, you know, I showed up to set on one movie. It was a very large movie I was doing. And uh, we had done all the screen tests and everything. We had set the looks. And I show up to the set for the first day, and there's a push-up bra and two chicken cutlets. <gasps> And I was like, ah, I didn't. I didn't this sign up from? for that. <laughs> and they told me it was a direct note from the, the studio head, which was a man. Uh, so you, that you they didn't wear them in the end? No, no. Good I told girl. them they can just totally F off. Yes, <laughs> I love that. That's amazing. That's brilliant. I ask this question to everybody because sure. we all have someone that we would absolutely kill over and die for. Who is the one person? that you have yet to meet that would just blow your mind. Dolly Parton. Oh, you haven't <laughs> met Dolly? Dolly Parton. I feel pretty much the same way, probably not as much I as you. I would die for Dolly. Have you been to Dollywood? No, not yet. We God. should go together. I, I met someone actually yesterday that said they, they uh, got to sit in. Dolly invited them to sit in while they, she got her makeup on. It was incredible. And, she, and I, my first question was, are the tattoos real? Because you know the, whole, the idea that she's covered in tattoos. Yeah. Tattoos are real. They're real. They're real. She's covered. Well, some things aren't real, though. We won't go into that. The chicken cutlets. Uh, the chicken cutlets? It's so lovely to meet you. Thank and thank you. you so much for doing this movie. Yeah, of course. I think it's going to really educate people and give a lot of people hope. Thank you. Um, and if you are watching this and you feel like you're being pushed into a situation you don't want to be put into, or um, you've got a kid and you're worried that they're going down the wrong route, um, click on those links and uh, learn a little bit about um, how you can support yourself or that person in your life. Thank you. Thank you. Lovely to meet you. Why does she give such a shit? I guess it's like having your own Disney villain, only this one won't let you jerk off. <laughs>